okay, Parker Sporlin is a sponsor for my videos. And I gave them some time at the AHR show. I actually was hanging out at their booth, meeting people. It was a really cool event. But I even went through some of their products. And, you know, I've always been a big, big fan of the BQ kit that Sporlin has, right? So I, I put some time into talking about their revamp on the BQ kit. And then also something that I was really interested in, their new NX series expansion valve, which uh, is going to be used on the R290 equipment. Now, I do a lot of work on R290 equipment, and uh, I really wish that, I've been hoping that Parker Sporlin was going to come out with something because I'm not a fan of the stainless steel body expansion valves um, that are being used on the existing R290 equipment. So uh, check out what I got in here. I felt, you know, that this really shouldn't go in the recap video because I really put some... uh, you know, gave them some time to talk about their products and I thought maybe they should get their own thing. So uh, let me know what you think. All right, I've got Dustin Searcy here from Parker Sporlin. So we're gonna kind of go through their booth and talk about a few of the cool feature or cool things that they have coming out. All right, Dustin, let's go ahead and uh, talk about this BQ kit. So we had received feedback from the industry. Contractors were looking for a more durable case. Guys have been using the Q series for many years and the case tends to get beat up. So we came out with a uh, upgraded case now Uh, The nice thing about this case is you can stock it with the standard 10 components, elements, and bodies to mix and and meet the needs of your customer base. However, we also have the ability of reconfiguring it, and if we reconfigure it, you can fit as many as 20 different components in this case by simply removing the uh, foam pad on the outside. That's interesting. So it's customizable. And one of the things that they were pointing out I thought was kind of a cool feature is with the foam pad, because of the thickness of the case, you can actually fit your that elusive wrench, that super thin wrench that everybody says exists, but we all want. I've never had one of those, but um, I like the fact that you can fit that down in there. Um, and then if you're working on the bench, if you guys have ever been to the supply houses, or you can, you know, I'm sure Drop you can it configure. In a vice. Yeah, yeah, you can configure something on the back of your van or something like that. You can have this because the supply houses have always had this, and I like the little cutout in there. That's cool. Um, you know, one of the features that I've always liked about the, the uh, let's just skate, what are, we, what are we calling this, the Q-Series case? So we, in general, we call this buildable style of valve the Q-Series. Okay. Uh, the Q was the original product, and then it, in, in that one had the conventional pin and port design. The BQ-Series is the balance ported version. Okay. And so we have the ability to build either style here. And right. so if you go into a wholesaler, they'll probably have components for one or both of the series. And if you stock them, you can use your preference. If you don't mind, let's open that Take back up look. real quick. I want to show one more thing. And for yeah. those of you guys that don't already know, the, the, my, my take on this kit is that as a restaurant refrigeration guy, I'm working on uh, equipment five tons and under, but then I work on equipment that's, uh, I've got an, um, let's just say a quarter ton reach in cooler, right? Some of the reaching coolers, you know, we can fit these valves inside there and we can build any expansion valve essentially. I mean, this is kind of like you can build, what, what's the tonnage range on refrigeration that we go to on this? We go typically up to about three tons on like 404A. Yeah. Um, and then you're going to go to uh, 448A, you can go up to about four tons. Five yeah, tons. and 448A is the new hot one that we're using out in California. So, you know, it's very versatile. We can build any valve, we can have everything ready. Um, Personally, I carry, I don't use the the flare bodies very much, but I still have a BQ body in there. Um, I keep the SBQ body. The SBQE is the most common, that's on walk-in coolers, that's an externally equalized. Or the EBQE, which is the straight through body. I prefer the SBQE because it has the removable strainer. That's always been a big feature, especially, you know, with us not following proper practices, which we need to get better at, but, you know, we really run into that problem. But these valves are completely, you know, you can disassemble them, put in whatever cartridge you want. Really cool features they have. You know, one of the things, and again, this is just uh, a problem that we have with making sure we follow through and follow proper practices. One of the most important things I can stress is putting on the identifier tag. Because without the identifier tag, you just hang this on the power head. Once you put it on, it won't come off because of the way that you wrap it around there. But if you don't put that on there, the only way to know what size cartridge is in there is by taking apart the valve. So it's really important to make sure we put that identifier tag on there. I also wanted to point out that this is the Q body cartridges. You notice it takes like a little Allen wrench and it's a small little cartridge. Uh, And then this is the BQ cartridges. So this is the balance port cartridges. These ones have like a little wrench that comes with it. 
little plastic guy. Right. You want to seat the cartridge. If it's a balance ported, you want to uh, seat it to where the cartridge goes down flush with the top of the brass body. So and, it'll go it'll go flush. And the important thing is that this right here doesn't allow Perfect. you to over tighten it. If you use a standard adjustable wrench or a crescent wrench, whatever you want to call it, you, you have the ability of really torquing that thing down to the point that if, you, if you're starting to strip the head out when you're tightening this down, you've gone way too tight. So this right here is the perfect tool because then you know you're not over tightening them. Right, and now, when I said flush, I probably should have been pointing to the Q series. When the Q series goes into the body, oh, it's going to be yeah. flush and flat across the top. Now talk about a little bit, and there's instructions in here. Talk about the power head. Here. What we recommend is you go one uh, one is right here. sixth of a turn, so you get six sides yeah. um, on your on your uh, hex, and so once it's hand tight, you will rotate it one sixth of a turn. Perfect. One of the things that I noticed when I was walking through the booth earlier, and Dustin, maybe you can enlighten me a little bit more, is this new expansion valve. It's pretty small. This is our NX series. It's a new OEM product that we are coming to market with and uh, it's a small thermostatic expansion valve. It'll have the option to be internally equalized as we're showing here. It can also be externally equalized. Um, is this gonna be used on R290 equipment? Uh, yes, it will have capabilities of working with R290. And uh, so the food service market is uh, really where we're thinking that one's gonna be So seen. right off the bat, what caught my eye about this is if any of you guys have worked on the existing R290 equipment out there, and a lot of the R290 expansion valves have stainless steel connections. Not that I don't know how to braze on stainless steel, but Dustin, one of the things that I run into brazing on stainless steel is they're usually tight, compact valves like this one. And obviously with stainless steel, we're gonna have two dissimilar metals. We're gonna have to use 56% silver solder or 45, but the, you have to get much hotter essentially to, and I always worry about overheating the valves. Um, I like the fact that we went with the copper fittings because that makes brazing these things in a lot easier. Now, is this valve going to be adjustable? Yes, this is, the plan is for this to be adjustable. Um, you can see on the bottom there is one cap on there and the plan is that this will have an adjustment assembly when you remove that cap. Awesome, okay, so we can make superheat adjustments if needed. Most of the time on the OEM little reaching coolers and stuff, we're not really adjusting on the valves, but it is always nice to have that option if we need to. Another thing that I'm noticing is the stainless steel power head, and where I see that being very beneficial is we're not gonna have a power head that rusts out anymore, and we're not gonna lose the charge because the side of the power head is rusted out, so I think that's a really cool feature. Um, stainless steel element, yeah, it all looks great. Uh, let's talk about that little dryer that I saw there too. So we have a propane optimized dryer, R290 filter dryer that we are showcasing here at the show as well. Um, it's a very compact design, it's a copper spun design, but the key here is that it is optimized for R290 refrigerant. Uh, we came out with this because in an R290 system, you have a limited charge, system charge of 180 gram, or 150 grams, yeah, excuse 150. me. And uh, a typical standard catch-all filter dryer or, or any other filter dryer has a lot of volume. And we wanted to optimize not only the desiccant in there for moisture removal, but we also wanted to make sure that it was optimized from a size standpoint so that we could reduce the amount of charge that it would hold and it, we were not detrimental to that 150 grams. So this one will hold 2.4 ounces of R290 and the desiccant inside is optimized for propane. So, but just to be clear, this is not just a filter. This actually has desiccant inside, so it has moisture removal capabilities. It, yes, it has desiccant, so it has that moisture removal capabilities, and also um, it does have the ability to remove solid contaminants. It's got a 120 mesh strainer in it as well.